I'm going to take this file and I'm going to put it into a new directory that I'm creating so that I can organize uh, my uh, documents. I'm going to call this uh, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, Christian Island, and I am going to place this particular file into that folder and open the folder. Put that over into the view. So here's our file. I am going to decompress that using a utility called 7-Zip. I just right-clicked the file. I'm going to go to 7-Zip. I'm going to come across to Extract Here, which means it will ex do the decompression and leave a new file in this location. And it will take a few moments, not particularly long. You can see it's making a file now which has a subscript simply of tar. And we will then do 7-zip on it again to extract the contents of the tar file uh, into our directory. All of these letters that preceded are a code number for the particular Landsat image that we're taking. Some of the early numbers have to do with the path and the row, and others have to do with the date it was acquired. I'm going to go ahead and extract this. Again, a right-click 7-zip to extract here. And it's now going to pull them out, and we will see the files coming in that make up the different bands that are part of this Landsat image. So, for example, the first one that came up is has a subscript here, B10. That represents band 1 uh, of the image, band 2, band 3, etc. And move this over. We'll actually see that there's bands 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then bands 6, 1, and 6, 2. Those are the thermal, is a thermal infrared band that is recorded by the instrument at two different games or amplification settings for the brightness. Uh, and then band 7, you know, and then band 8 is the panchromatic band. This particular file you can read with a text reader, although because of this peculiar suffix, it doesn't uh, just, you can't just click on it and have it come up in Word. But if you open it with some program like WordPad or Microsoft Word that will read text files, you can read what's in it. It actually has the explanation of what all of the numbers are and letters that precede the name of the file and some other information about the uh, acquisition. Now, what we have here are a set of individual images uh, that each represent a band. When we work with Landsat data in Erdos Imagine, we generally want to take all of these layers and combine them into one file, or in our case, a subset of these layers into a single file. So my goal is to make a VNIR, or visual and near-infrared, stack of these images so that I will have six bands, bands 1 through 5 and band 7, in my imagery to work with with Erdos Imagine. I've now started Erdos Imagine, which you can see above, and I am going to go through the process of doing what Erdos calls a layer stack of the six bands that I want to combine. I want to click on Interpreter and then go to the option Utilities and I will find in the Utilities pull-down menu the word Layer Stack. This is the algorithm that we're going to use to put six images together into one. So I'll click on that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of a couple of these so that they're out of the way. And I can get rid of this. Okay. The way this works is I'm going to progressively, one at a time, input in this box the different images that the different bands that are in individual files that I want to stack together. And then I'm one by one going to add them into a list here of all that I want to put together. So I'm going to click this to use a, to get a selector. I'm going to go to find in my documents. Up above, I want to go to Desktop, and I want to go to my Christian Island folder. Now notice that there's nothing in this, and that's because it's being told to look by default for Imagine files, .img files. The files that we have are TIFF files, so I'm going to want to go down, select TIFF here, 
and all of a sudden we see each of the images, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 6, 2, 7, and 8 are available to me. I want to load these in order, so I'm going to double click on band 1. It brings it in here. This tells me that it only has one layer. Uh, it's just a single band image and therefore I'm going to now click Add and it adds that, that file to my list. I'm then going to success, successively do the others and you can probably and I click Add again. You want to do this in the right order because this will be the order the images will be stacked in the data. And finally Band 7. Okay. For this particular application, I don't need to change any of these options down at the bottom, but I do need to put in the name of an output file, and this will be the name of the file that I uh, want uh, to be my imagined file with the data put together. I'll go back here to Christian Island, and I'll put in uh, CA. Island, which will be a dot image file. To remind myself that it's a VNIR stack, I'm going to add VNIR at the end of the name so that I, and that's just my sort of code for what's there. I'm going to click OK once and it's going to seem like nothing happens, but it actually has added the dot IMG at the end. Then I click OK a second time. It's now ready to run. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to take a while to do this, and I'll probably try to flip this out. So I'll be back in a few moments as it ends. It's now done, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK to make this little window go away. I'm going to go up and open a viewer, and we'll go in and see what the data that we have look like. Okay, we have a viewer. I am going to wait until it comes up with the icons. Select an open icon. And I'm now going to use the fact that I recently made this file, so I'm going to go to Recent, and I sometimes have to scroll over, and there is my Christian Island VNIR image. I'm going to double click it, and it takes us to here. I'll say OK. And we've now loaded the data set that, uh, that I requested.